You know what? I'm actually starting to feel sorry. I'm starting to feel sorry for Japan. Why? Every single day we hear new news like this. I actually think I was wrong about the American auto market, about the American car brands, General Motors, Ford, Stellantis. You know why I was wrong? If you actually look at the stats and the numbers, you avoid the emotion for a minute. It's hard to separate emotion. But if we do that, you start to realize that American automakers, even though they're very far behind when it comes to EVs, when you compare them to China and Europe, they are so far ahead of Japan that, yeah, what is going to happen is this. America, they'll be okay. Europe, they'll be okay. China, they're going to crush it. They're going to crush Japan. But this kind of news shows you that, yes, America, I think they're going to be okay. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. And I'm happy to provide you with some more positive news. Every other week, every other week, every other day, every other day, a new battery factory news. We get news of a new battery factory going up somewhere in the US. A new electric car factory is going to be built. More parts are going to be made in the US for electric cars. This is good news. It's exciting times. But contrast that. How much, how often do we hear of this happening in Japan? Where, well, you know, it's their lifeblood. I mean, I know Americans depend on the automotive industry. To a degree, they do for sure. Nothing like the Japanese do, though. I mean, Toyota, what are they saying? 14% of all their cars that they're going to sell in 2029 will be electric. That's a recipe for absolute disaster. And I think even they know it now. So what's this latest news? Stellantis, the parent company of Dodge, Jeep, and Chrysler, has selected Kokomo, Indiana as the site for its next electric vehicle battery factory. This plant will be built in partnership with South Korea's Samsung SDI, and it will cost between 2.5 and 3 billion US dollars. So it's going to be pretty big. The two companies will share the cost of the factory, which is expected to create 1,400 new jobs in Kokomo, where Stellantis already operates several manufacturing facilities for castings, transmissions, and engines. You know, there's going to be a lot of job losses from this switch, right? This global switch from internal combustion engine vehicles, right, to electric vehicles. There's going to be heaps. But if you think about it, well, who's going to be the biggest manufacturer of cars in the world by 2030? Well, it's going to be either Tesla or BYD. Tesla's an American car company, right? They're setting up a huge factory. They've built a huge factory in Texas. They're going to employ a lot of people. And if you add to that factories like this, right, GM's factories they're building all over the place, Ford's new electric car factories, maybe, just maybe, America will actually be okay. Now, The Verge reports this new battery factory will help accelerate the company's push to electrify its vehicle lineup. Stellantis has been slower to embrace battery electric cars than Ford or General Motors. I mean, their CEO is constantly claiming they can't do it. It's too hard. Mommy, help me. <laughs> I can't sell EVs. It's too hard. The dude's a whinger. He's a whiner. He's a baby. Get rid of him. He's making 24 million US dollars a year to whine. Please get rid of him. Bring in someone like who? Herbert Deese. Bring him in. Stellantis, seriously, offer Herbert Deese more money. Get him in. That's what I say. Anyhow, Stellantis expects to sell 5 million EVs a year by 2030 and to sell only electric cars after 28, right? After 2028, Stellantis says it will only sell electric cars. So I guess they've finished whining and moaning and talking about the inevitable future of the automotive industry and decided, yeah, all right, all right, we can do it. Stellantis has previously announced the construction of a 1.4 billion battery manufacturing facility in partnership with LG Energy Solutions in Windsor, Ontario. Good news for Ontario as well. At a press conference to announce the new Indiana factory, Stellantis COO Mark Stewart acknowledged that some industry observers believe the company is lagging behind General Motors and Ford. He said, sometimes people think we're behind. We are not. That's just an illusion. Um, okay. Today, we already have 19 different electric vehicles in the marketplace around the world. Well, that's a good point. 
We have two plug-in hybrid vehicles, uh, not relevant, here in the US. So we are behind when it comes to bringing electric vehicles to the US marketplace, but not much. No, you're well behind. You're, uh, yeah, you're in the US, you're way, way behind. Clearly third place, but by a long way. To GM and Ford, of course. To Tesla, yeah, miles away. The new Kokomo factory is scheduled to start production in 2025. It will have an initial annual production capacity of 23 gigawatt hours, with an increase to 33 gigawatt hours in the next few years. The company's Windsor factory will, with LG will have an annual capacity of 45 gigawatt hours for a total of 78 gigawatt hours. Now, what I don't understand, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. I mean, they're saying, right, this factory, this new factory in Indiana is going to cost Two and a half to three billion, and it's going to provide the company with 23 gigawatt hours of battery production per year, with an increase to 33 gigawatt hours after some sort of ramp up. Right? They're saying this other factory they're building with LG will cost half that price, but provide 45 gigawatt hours. So they're going to be getting significantly more batteries in the partnership with LG at half the price. Something doesn't add up. Maybe the numbers uh, have been misreported. When I find out what's going on there, I'll let you all know. Now, in comparison. Ford has said its three new battery plants will enable 130 gigawatt hours a year of production capacity. That's a lot. General Motors is planning four new battery factories in the US, also with LG Chem, for a total annual capacity of 140 gigawatt hours, outdoing Ford by 10 gigawatt hours. Volkswagen is aiming to have six battery cell production plants operating in Europe by 2030, for a total of 240 gigawatt hours per year. And apparently right now they're looking for a factory site where they can build a battery gigafactory in the USA. So yeah, as Clean Technica says, Stellantis is running well behind its rivals, but hey, better late than never, right? I personally think the Airflow, the Chrysler Airflow EV car looks pretty damn good. I made a video about that vehicle. I'll put a link in the description below to that car. And I imagine, you know, at some point in, in time, Stellantis will bring some other impressive electric cars to the US, hopefully here to Australia, and I'm sure to Europe as well. And I look forward to seeing them. Now, to be fair, 78 gigawatt hours of capacity, it's nowhere near enough for Stellantis to be able to make enough electric cars to supply US consumers right now. If they change all the cars they currently sell in America right now to being fully electric, they need a lot more than 78 gigawatt hours of production. They need over 100. But I'm sure they'll announce a third battery gigafactory at some time in the near future, as in within the next 12 months. That's what I expect to happen anyway. Now let's do these numbers, right? If we put all these numbers together, we look at Tesla's battery production, Stellantis, GM, Ford, even Toyota are apparently going to do batteries in America. We add Stellantis to that. That's a lot of batteries being manufactured in the US. And that, my friends, is fantastic news. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.